Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, I thought I would talk to, to you today a little bit about buying a violin. Um, and uh, when you have a little child, uh, basically you want to buy a cheap little violin. And a cheap little violin usually costs anywhere from $300, $400, $500. It should come. If you're very lucky, maybe you can buy one for $175, something like that. But for two, three, four hundred dollars you should be able to get a bow and a case and a violin. Um, the bows have to be the right size and so does the violin. Usually a teacher will be able to, to help you find the right size for the child, but generally if you put the hand behind the violin, even a little hand, a little violin, and the, the hand is straight here with a little bit of a bend, that might be the right size when they bring the hand back here. But if the, if the hand is not able to get behind the scroll, chances are the violin is too big for the child. So that the child's arm should be able to come behind the scroll, okay? And um, with the bow, the bow can be a smaller bow here, right? But if it's a, it's a big bow, then it'll be on a little tiny violin. Um, maybe I've got a little tiny violin around here, actually, I could find. Um, and uh, show you that, but but the bow should not be real long either, so it shouldn't be like they have to draw the bow like this. It should be a smaller bow, which means it'll be from about here to here, in which case it'll be... Small violins are pretty cheap, and you can buy them in certain stores or online. And, and uh, if they're experienced uh, retailers, you'll, you'll get a pretty good deal for two, three hundred dollars. Um, but try to get a teacher or someone to help make sure it's the right size. Perhaps there could be an exchange policy. If it turns out the violin is too big or too small, they'll they'll switch it for you. And years later, they should be able to give you a larger violin as the child grows. They should have some kind of special plans where you can trade the violin back in. Forgot I had my hat on still. All right. Um, so larger violins, it depends on how talented the kid is. If, if the younger person is going to work hard and they're very, very serious, so you want to buy a little more expensive violin, maybe a thousand, two thousand dollar violin, uh, even though it's a little bit larger but smaller than a full size, that will give them a good sound and give them a chance to produce a nice tone. Uh, it'll help them not press too hard or give them a sense of what they can accomplish if they practice properly. They can make a nice sound if the violin has a nice sound. Now, as the sound of a violin, you have to develop your ears to understand that. It doesn't mean it's going to be simply loud or soft. Sometimes loud can be very rough or crass, crass sounding. It, sometimes you want a more mellow, beautiful tone. So don't think that loud is good and soft is bad, but again, try to try to discern if the quality of the instrument really is nice and, and really sounds pleasant. Uh, again, if someone plays the violin, it would be good if they go with you to try violins or to help you select the proper violin at a, very, at a store, let's say. Um, and then the full-size violin, if you're an amateur or you're not really serious about going to Carnegie Hall and playing a big concert, having a big concert career, then again, you can buy a violin for maybe $800 or $1,000 for a full size and a bow in a case. Uh, and, you, and you can buy the bow separately. They don't have to go together as a package. You might buy a bow somewhere and a violin somewhere else in a case you can order. Uh, full size uh, is pretty standard for the violins. Um, and so if you really want a fantastic violin, then you have to decide what you can afford and what you want to invest in. If you do invest in a nice violin, it will go up in value over the years. So unlike uh, an automobile, the minute you buy it and drive it off the lot, the lot it's going to go down in value. It becomes a used car. But violins are used over the years, sometimes several hundred years, and the value can go up if it's a handmade violin by a known maker uh, somewhere in America or Europe or it could be in Asia, they have very good makers all over the world now, they will go up slowly in value. If the violin happens to be made in Italy, it's an Italian violin, they tend to go up uh, in value to appreciate faster. 
because of Stradivarius and certain famous Italian makers, there's a certain cachet with having an Italian-made violin, and they retain their value quite well, and they go up in value. So, uh, if you buy a two or three or four thousand dollar violin that's unknown, not so famous maker, but well made, sounds good, and that's your budget, in five or ten years it may be worth just a little bit more. But if you spend a little extra money, you spend maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on a violin, and that's very common, it may appreciate in value a little faster because very likely it's a better known, uh, more prestigious name as a maker. And some violins cost several hundred thousand dollars and more. And some of these violins are made in the 18th century in Italy. And in, in those cases, they become very sought after, very famous. And if they're in good condition, they can be valuable. Those violins have a very good name, like a famous artist like Picasso or something. People know the name, and they're searching for that maker. Um, be careful about fakes. There are forgeries. There are people who will tell you this is a very valuable violin, but you do need to check with other people. You need several different people to confirm that what you're buying is a good investment. And a lot of violin dealers are not exact, exactly honest, and they might withhold information from you about the condition, or maybe <clears throat> the top of the violin is made by one maker and the back is made by somebody else, and maybe the scroll is made more recently. Those things can take the price and uh, devaluate the value of the violin, the price may come down. So uh, very important to know and check the condition. Sometimes there can be cracks, you know, certain, maybe it can be revarnished, someone else revarnished it maybe. It also takes away the value of the instrument. So it's best to have uh, someone experienced or an expert to help you buy a more expensive violin and get two or three opinions if you can to make sure you're, you're covered, okay? Um, that's so long and short of it. I can't think of much else what to tell you, but you know, name, authenticity, condition. It's good to have papers. Many times when something's expensive, like a, a piece of artwork, a, a famous painting, if you see, usually they're gonna be, there's going to be some kind of a certificate of authenticity. Somebody will put in writing that they believe this violin is authentic, made by this maker in this year, in this city, and they feel the value is gonna be this and that's uh, also uh, achieved with an insurance appraisal. If somebody will give you an insurance appraisal, that means they're willing to tell you what they believe the monetary value is, okay? And of course, tone is important. If you play the violin and it sounds good, that's wonderful. If, if you take along an experienced player to test them, that's good. If there's something wrong with the violin, if this is too low or this is too high, or, or something strange about it, something is buzzing, making it, then you have to find out if the violin is, is, is healthy or not. And sometimes it's open on the sides here, and that can be fixed with a little bit of glue and clamped by a professional. Uh, and sometimes it's more serious. If there's a crack here in the middle of the back, or a crack here on the top, it needs to have a patch underneath it to protect the, the crack so it doesn't grow larger and buzz, make noises. So those can be problems with the, the, the beginner or amateur collector or buyer wouldn't understand, so you must check these things. If you don't know, then you have to ask someone who does know to help you. And sometimes violin teachers have experience and they can advise you. Uh, and sometimes the violin teacher's friends are violin dealers. And sometimes they get a little commission for steering something a certain way, and that's almost normal or, or common. So be aware of that. Try to see other dealers, other people of your choice to get their opinion also. So thanks for listening today. Thanks for watching the show. Today's show is primarily how to buy a violin and some of the priorities of what you should look out for. Okay, good luck shopping for your violin and wish you all the best.
Thanks for watching.